God, we thank you for the movement of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the woman thou art loose, God's leading ladies conference. We thank you for the vision and for the visionary who brought us together for such a time as this. We thank you for every workshop presenter, every plenary presenter, every preacher that's going to present to us. And we ask your divine blessings and anointing to reign upon their lives. Now, Lord, bless the sister or the brother whose hand I'm now holding. As you help me to become a leading lady, Lord, take them to the next level in their life. Lord, not just a new level, take us to another dimension. Oh, Lord, a place we've never been before. Take us out of our comfort zone. We're ready to give birth, Lord, and the baby was halfway out, but we're ready to push in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for the release that has already happened in this place. Now help us to be mountain movers and world changers and leaders for such a time as this. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, that all who believe say, Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. You can give him some praise. This workshop is called You Are Too Blessed to Be Stressed. Leading ladies are blessed women. Too blessed to be stressed. Too blessed to tolerate mess. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And my book, Too Blessed to Be Stressed, was birthed out of a time when there was burnout in my life. And Bishop opened with 3 John, the second chapter, which said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And Bishop talked about us being out of balance. And when there is no balance and when there are no boundaries, that creates burnout. And so we are mind, body, and spirit. Just as there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, a triune God, we are mind, body, and spirit. And all of those have to be able to flow and function for us to be blessed women who are leading ladies in Jesus Christ. And whenever one of those is out of kilter, we are out of balance and burnout can happen. In life, we are taught to stretch our minds, and so we have the academics down. In life, we are taught to exercise the body. But God says, now as leading ladies, I'm taking you to exercise your spirit, to stretch your spirit where it's never been before. Slap somebody high five, say, my spirit's going a new place. Amen, amen. So blessed women are too blessed to be stressed. So I want you to repeat after me Psalm 100, which declares we're blessed women. I will will make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord, Lord, all ye lands. lands. I will will serve the Lord Lord with gladness. gladness. That's not sadness, that's gladness. Amen. Amen. I will come before the Lord Lord. with his presence. Amen. Amen. And I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. And I will enter his courts with praise. I will be thankful unto him and I will bless his name for I know that the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and I know his truth endureth to all generations which means that includes me amen So we're entering his gates with thanksgiving. We're entering his courts with praise. We're living a life that's going to be thankful unto him. And so blessed women, first of all, honor God. We put God first as our priority. We recognize Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. He leads me as a leading lady. I want you to turn with me, if you won't mind, to Isaiah 6, 1. We're going to participate in this workshop. Isaiah 6. Verse 1. All right, you don't have to fake it this morning. When you get there, I want you to say amen. Amen. If you're still looking, say need more time. time. When you find it, I want you to read together with me in concert. Let us declare Isaiah 6, 1. What does it say? In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. 
Blessed women honor God and they begin to see God in a new way. And when you begin to see God in a new way, God begins to give you new visions that you had not seen when you were not in this place before. And so Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. I saw Uzziah die, but I saw also the Lord. And he says as he goes on that my eyes were open to begin to see new things. And so if you are a leading lady, the first thing God wants to do is open your eyes so that you might see him a little more clearly and love him a little more dearly. Turn to tell your sister, I need my eyes opened. Eyes. Now lift your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, open my eyes. Lord, open my eyes. There's a sister poet named Carol Etzler who's a leading lady. And she wrote a poem, Sometimes I Wish My Eyes Hadn't Been Opened. Sometimes I wish I could no longer see all of the hurt and the pain and the longing of my sisters and me as we try to be free. Sometimes I wish my eyes hadn't been opened. Just for a moment how sweet it would be not to be struggling, not to be striving, but just to sleep secretly in our slavery. But now that I've seen with my eyes, I can't close them. Because deep inside me, somewhere I'd still know the road that my sisters and I have to travel. My heart would say yes, my feet would say go. Sometimes I wish my eyes hadn't been opened. But now that they have, I'm determined to see that somehow this day my sisters and I will be the women God created us to be. Turn to tell somebody, sister, open your eyes. Yes, there's pain involved in having an eye-opening experience. But God wants you to see some new stuff. Isaiah said it took Uzziah's eyes to close for my eyes to open. Because when I was running with King Uzziah, I was on the A list. I was in the VIP room. I got on the inside list of the White House. I was invited to all the social things. I was a corporate man. I was running with the in crowd. And so when I was so busy doing that, sometimes God got kicked to the curb a little bit. Amen. So God had to rearrange my priorities and sometimes God has to move some folk out of our lives in order for us to see him more clearly. Am I right about it? You know there's some folk who've been in your life that were good for a season. Say season. But that season is over and God says, I'm going to give you some new friends. You may have to walk alone for a little while, but you're never really alone for he says, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end. So Isaiah said, my eyes opened when my brother friend's eyes closed. And he said, some things happened for me. I began to see God in a way I had never seen him before. He said, you guys sing holy, holy, holy. He said, but I was standing in the presence of God. I, I saw the angels bowing before him. I heard them crying out and singing. And I said, I don't want anybody out praise me. And so I began to praise him with my lips. But first, my lips had to be cleaned up. So one of the angels had to fly over to me with a live coal because sometimes we say some things that are not pleasing to God. Am I right about it? I mean, some of us have said the S word this morning and I don't mean Savior. Come on, somebody. Can we be real up in here? And so Isaiah said, my mouth had to be cleaned up first. Some things I didn't, he said, but the crowd I ran with also had to get out my life. Some of y'all have to change your crowd because they were right for then, but they're not right for now. And so I contend if you're going to be a leading lady who is too blessed to be stressed, who honors God, three things must happen. The first thing, as your eyes are being opened, is that your vision changes. Say vision. vision. And every, every time throughout the word of God, when God was going to do a new thing, the vision of the person began to change and he began to pour into them a new vision. Behold, I will do a new thing. The old thing has passed and the new has come. And when your vision begins to change, God begins to perform what I call spiritual cataract surgery on us. That he begins to wipe the scales off our eyes that we might see him a little more clear. You thought you were seeing God, but God said, I want to take you to a place you've never been before. Now, I live in the Bronx, New York. I live in a high-rise co-op on the corner of 165th and the Grand Conquest. It's like Action Jackson on that corner. And so many people don't even put the TV on. They just go to the window to see what's going on outside. Can we be real up in here? And I used to look out my window on the concourse and I used to see stuff all the time. But for the last few years, everything looked kind of gray outside. But it was because there was a film on my window. 
So one day I called downstairs, I buzzed the little condo operator, and Jose came upstairs to fix my dripping sink. But as he left, he turned and he saw my windows, and he said, Dr. Cook, can I wash your windows? I said, are they that bad? He said, yeah. And as he took his little squeegee out and began to wash my windows, it wiped that film away, and I began to see things on the concourse I had not seen before. They looked gray before, but all of a sudden I saw green trees, and I saw other colors because there was a film covering my windows. Some of us have come here with a film covering us, and God said it's time to let Jesus be your window washer and wash the film away. Turn and tell somebody, let Jesus be your window washer. So as your vision is changing, God is washing your windows, performing the spiritual cataract surgery. And the first thing as your vision begins to change, you have a vision inward. It's an introspective look. Because you've got to begin to look at the areas of your own life. Dr. Bate, Dr. Pete, Dr. Bishop Jakes last night talked about the self. And there's some things in the self you've got to begin to look at. You've got to say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. I stand in the need of prayer. It's not the deacon, not my brother, not my sister, but I've got some things in my life that need some cleaning up. Am I right about it? Turn to tell somebody, you ain't all that and a bag of chips. No, 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 some of your chips are crushed. And so God said, you got to take a look at yourself. Stop putting the blame on other folks and begin to deal with yourself. The scriptures say, how can you look at the beam in somebody else's eye when you've got a whole plank in yours? you got to confront your stuff, honey. Look at yourself, but you can't stay there because then you become egocentric. You know anybody who thinks they're all of that and some chips and some Cheetos? Woo! So God says, after you've gone inward and you've begun like the psalmist to declare, Lord, search me. And if there's anything in me that you don't like, clean me up, Lord. Straighten me out, Lord. But then he says, you've got to look upward. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help does not come from the Lexus I drive. My help does not come from my BMW or my Audi, but my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth and who made me. And so we got to keep our focus on God because we understand that it is he who made us and not we ourselves. But he says you can't even just stay there because there's some folk who are too heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. Do you know any folk like that? So have somebody high five say, you may be sitting behind someone right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, then you got to look out and begin to see the work that needs to be done where you are. So many are busy, so busy traveling that they miss the opportunity for service and ministry right where they are. And so God said, you got to look out and see if I can help somebody as I pass along. Then my living won't be in vain because my vision is changing. I'm seeing the hurting and the helpless and the homeless, and I'm seeing that there's work to be done. But God's got to get me ready first as a leading lady who's too blessed to be stressed before he can do a good work through me. So your vision has to change. The second thing that needs to happen is you got to serve God with vitality if you're going to be a blessed woman. Say vitality. No, no, say it like you got some life in it. Say vitality. 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 Vital is the root word of it. It's the same word that means life. In Spanish, it's vida. La vida is the life. It is from where our life force comes. And what happens is many of us come to Christ and we just praise him at certain times. But vitality means that you carry that spirit with you wherever you go. On the bus, you, you're praising him. And in your car, you're praising him. And when you get into a traffic jam, you don't start cursing. You start praising. Because you understand that the life force in me comes from Jesus Christ. Vitality. That means you serve God when it's in season and you serve him when it's not in season. You don't go from church to church, church hopping, but you stand the ground and you work while there's still day. And you got to serve him with vitality. Act like God has done something in life. Now when I'm home on Thursday night, one of the shows I like to look at is ER. Before they took Eric LaSalle or I, I watched that show on Thursday night. That was, that was my show. But there's a lot of drama, and we're talking about leading ladies being sent to stage. And as the body is coming in on the stretcher, there's a lot of drama, and the music is playing in the background. Da, 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 da. And they bring the body in on a stretcher, and it just looks like it was dead. And then they say, go get my resuscitation clamps. And they take the clamps, and they pump it on the body once, and it does nothing. Do it again. Do 
it again. And the body jumps up. It looked like it was dead, but it still had some life in it. Well, some of y'all came in here this morning on a stretcher. Oh, yeah, Jesus said, come on, get my resuscitation clamps out. The bishop came and God said, pump them once. The bishop began to pray. God said, pump them again. God said, some of y'all still sitting there. It's time to be blessed, women who are not stressed. Come alive, say yeah. Somebody ought to take the time out and praise him. You got to praise him for the problems he's brought you through. Praise him for the blessings he's given to you. Somebody ought to praise God. Lift your hands and say, praise him. Oh, I know we're cute now. We're leading ladies. We're dressing right. We're acting right. I know we got our curls and our weaves. Come on now. And you don't want to sweat that St. John out, but if anybody asks you what's the matter with me, tell them I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I've got Jesus on my side and I'm not afraid to praise him. Say yeah! You got to have that praise. Wherever you go. If you're still using the outhouse, praise him there. When I walk in the front door of the White House, I praise him there. Because I say, look where the Lord has brought me from. He's a mighty good God. My relatives were from the rural south, Monroe, Concord, North Carolina. Anybody from North Carolina? Spent some of my wonderful, wonderful summers there. But it, it's a major thing to take a city girl from a co-op where you can buzz downstairs to an outhouse. It, it, it's major. Turn it to somebody. It's major. But when I walked in that front door of the White House, I remembered where the Lord had brought my family from. That this daughter of sharecroppers could now sit at the table with princes and presidents. I said, What a mighty God we serve. Look where the Lord has brought us from. Now, how many of you saw the movie Air Force One? Well, I was up in there. Slap somebody high five, say, Yeah, sister was a leading lady. Yeah. I, I was up in there with the president and. It was a major experience. They flew us down to the White House. I was on the race initiative with one of the presidents, President Clinton. And it was John Hope Franklin, the great historian. There were seven of us handpicked by the president to represent him for two years around the country. So they flew us to the Oval Office, and we sat in there and drank tea and ate some little biscuits. I had my little pinky go out like I was a leading lady. I was like Kathy Lee Gifford, if they could see me now. So then they had these long stretched limousines in the back of the White House. So we're getting ready to take you over to Air Force One. The president climbed in the first one and guess who was in number two? Hello. Man, they closed off Pennsylvania Avenue. People were waving. They didn't know who I was, but I was like, I'm up in here. And you out there, hey. I know we're supposed to be humble, but I was a leading lady. I wasn't no time for that. No, no, no time for that. So they flew us over. The Lincoln Monument was there. The Washington Monument was there. It was one of those historic, the red, white, and blue flag was flying. They had two helicopters. The president got on one, we got on the other. And the chopper took us over to Air Force One. And they had lots of the legislators on board. They had these big, wide sofas, bigger than this pulpit. I said, this is one time it's good to have hips. So hello. <laughs> Can we be real up in here? I put all 44 inches right up in that seat, yeah. I was like, I'm not well endowed for nothing, honey. And I sat there and they had all of us sitting at these big white seats. And so one of the Congress people said, uh, there's a little white telephone there and you can call home anytime you'd like. But you try to act like you've been there before. So I was like, no, thank you. So the president called all of them into a meeting. I picked up the phone and said, Ma, do you know where I am? I'm on Air Force One. Oh, yeah, I did, baby. And so my mom's really a mom. She's like, oh, everybody pick up. You know, in black households, everybody picks up. <laughs> everybody pick up. Susan's on the phone. She on Air Force One. So my brother's from the South Bronx. He's like, girl, you on Air Force One? Take everything they got. Take it, take it all. Child, let everybody know you've been up there. 
So I was all in the bathroom. I got off the plane like this. Secret Service, like, where you been? I'm like, on Air Force One. But this was the clincher. They served us baked beans and barbecue ribs. Now, when you're in mixed company, you know, and you're a leading lady, you wait to see what they're going to do with their ribs. You know I'm right. You don't just chomp and start cutting. You, you wait. So then the president picked up his rib. I was like, this is my kind of president, baby. Oh, yeah, we were chomping on ribs on Air Force One. Spare rib juice dripping all the way down. I said, yeah. But when we got off, I just reflected on how the Lord took us from a tenement in Harlem where my folk had to work three jobs year round, send us south so they could get another job in the summer. And here I was eating barbecue ribs and beans up on Air Force One when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my very soul cries out, hallelujah! Praise God for saving me! Can somebody praise him today? Say yeah! That's what vitality is. It's like giving God everything you got. I mean, when I go to Burger King, I'm a Whopper woman. I'm like, give me the works. Don't hold back on the pickles, on the special sauce. I know it doesn't upset you, but it upsets me. Give me everything you got. And what God is saying is when you throw your hands up to him, and when you allow your lips to praise him, you're saying, God, I'm giving you everything I got. I'm not holding back on the pickles. I'm not holding back on the lettuce. I'm just praising you. Come on, somebody, wave your hands in the air. Wave them like you just don't care. If you love the Lord and you feel all right, let me hear you say, oh, yeah. We're too blessed to be stressed. Stop somebody high five and say, I'm too blessed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sit down, you're making me nervous. That's women who want their eyes open. This is only for leading ladies. But there's a third V. There's vision, there's vitality. And there's victory. Say victory. victory. When you're blessed women, when you're God's leading ladies, you carry with you the spirit of victory. It is what our whole theology centers around, that we serve a God who did not stay in the grave, but we serve a God who got up. That's victory. And so whenever you're a leading lady and you're taking center stage in your life, when you walk in, you walk in like you're somebody. Oh, yeah, you carry the spirit of victory with you. I saw a pillow down at Hallmark. It said, a man is king of his castle until the queen comes home. So when I come in, I'm saying, the queen has arrived. Slap somebody high five, say, the queen, the queen has arrived. Oh, you walk like a queen. Carrying the spirit of victory all around you. Oh, yeah, you walk in not stuck up but prayed up. Knowing that God's got my back. He walks in front of me, he walks behind me, his rod and his staff, they comfort me, a table's before in the presence of my enemies, and he's anointing me for victory. Oh, victory, victory. I learned some things about victory. I spoke at a Martin Luther King breakfast for the Alpha Phi Alpha men. Norfolk, Virginia. Anybody married to an alpha? All right. There was a room full of brothers. I was the only sister. I said, my Lord, what a morning. <laughs> and then the speech was over, and they shook this leading lady's hand. Dr. Cook, fine speech. If you need anything, call us. They were gone. Dropped me at Norfolk Airport. 
gave them my, air, my airplane ticket. I had to go from Norfolk to DC to make my connection to get back to New York to see Brother Cook and my two little cookies. <laughs> gave the man my ticket. He said, I'm sorry, miss, but your flight's been canceled. I got very New York on them. Cancel? <laughs> I lost it then, baby. So is there another flight that you can get me on? He took my ticket, started punching some buttons up on the computer, took his sweet time. You ever see folk who take their sweet time? You trying to go somewhere and they taking their sweet time. His jerry curl stuff was dripping on my ticket. I was like, come on. Come on, brother, speed this thing up. You know you know about them men with the jerry curl juice. Come on. Go on, can we be real up in here? So he said, there's another flight in eight minutes, but you're not gonna make it, baby. Yeah. I said, eight minutes, I can run. I took my ticket, I started running. I was running like the old OJ Simpson, baby. I was jumping over stuff, running, 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 like I was making a Hertz commercial. I got to security, all my stuff went off. Anybody here always got your stuff go off? I mean, they had to frisk me. I was like, do what you gotta do, but I gotta get to gate number nine. It was the last gate. Anybody here always get the last gate? I think they just have it on my ticket. Give her the last gate. It's in the computer somewhere, last gate. I can be in Tuscaloosa, last gate. Dayton, Ohio, last gate. LaGuardia, last gate. But I said, gate number nine, I'm feeling fine. And I started running, I ran, I ran. Past one, swish. Past two and three, swish, swish. Past four, five, six, swish, swish, swish. Seven, eight, I got to nine, ran down the stairs, got on the plane, they shut the door. I made it, say yeah. And as I caught my breath, I started thinking about that experience. I said, there are a whole lot of sisters, when somebody says you can't make it, say, all right, all right, I ain't gonna make it. But let me tell you something, if you are a leading lady, if you are a child of the king, as long as the Lord gives you breath, some days you gotta crawl, some days you gotta walk, and some days you gotta run, but you can make it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say it! Yeah. That's what victory is. It means whatever it takes. If God gives me the strength, I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus. But I learned another lesson about victory. My last year of the White House, I was a White House fellow in 93, 94. And at the end of the program, it's a very wonderful program for leading ladies who want to go and work in government. At the end of the year, we could go anywhere in the world paid by the government. I said, my Lord, thank you. <laughs> and so that year was the year of the elections in South Africa. I said, I knew Martin Luther King through my parents, but I was only 11 when he died, so I didn't have the benefit of marching with him and understanding what that movement really meant. But I said, if I could just meet Nelson Mandela, it would make my life, it would be a highlight of my life. And so we voted as a class to go to South Africa. 14 day trip, we had the red carpet treatment, all the bands were playing, they would roll out the carpet, it was wonderful. We went to this site and that site. I said, I just wanna meet Nelson Mandela. The last day they said, we're gonna leave a little early for the airport and we're gonna make a stop at an auditorium. We're not sure, but Mandela may be there. I got my camera out, first one on the bus, yeah. We rode to the auditorium, it was about the size here of this worship center. And in the sanctuary where people of God gathered together. And then they started with this beautiful choir from South Africa, men and women. The men were dressed in their bubas. The sisters were dressed in their dashikis and their heads were wrapped in geles. The 12 different dialects in South Africa. And so they began to sing in one of them their Sikalele song. I didn't understand everything that it meant, but I, I knew something was going on. And you know, a whole lot of church folk are hung up about dancing. But Africans dance for everything. They dance for birth, they dance for life, they dance for death. They dance because they realize God's been good to them. And so they dance when the men go out, they dance when they come home, they dance at the birth of a child, they dance for everything. It is a celebration of the one who gave us life. And so the choir tried to sing kind of erect, but their bodies began to sway. And they started singing, Sikalele. Sikalele. And their bodies were doing a dance called the Toy Toy. And then they called up Nelson Mandela. He tried to stand really erect and British at first. 
but the music got to him. He said, hey. Sika le 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 le. Then they called the bishop Tutu. I said, I know the preacher's not going to dance. He said, hey, don't leave me out. And you know, he's kind of short. He put a little dip. And so we had the choir and the president and the bishop all doing the toy toy. Why were they doing the toy toy? Because it was their victory dance. Their bodies were expressing what their spirits were feeling. Once we were down, now we're up. Once I was a prisoner, now I'm president. That's something to dance about. And every time we wake up in the morning, somebody ought to do a little toy toy. He woke you up this morning. Toy toy started you on your way. Toy toy gave you food to eat. Toy toy put clothes on your back. Toy toy gave you life and strength. Do a little toy toy. So don't sit there and be cute. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. Victory is mine in the name of Jesus. Snap somebody high five and say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Oh, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. It's toy toy time. Oh, hallelujah. Don't be looking at a sister when she gets her step. That's just a little victory. She's saying, you don't know. Like I know what he's done for me. Heal my body. Toy toy told me to run on. Toy toy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So blessed women, honor God. They honor God. They honor God. They honor God. And every part of their life, every part of their being, when they wake up, they praise him. When they go to bed, they, they praise him. For children and for spouses, they praise him. For praying for a spouse, they praise him in advance. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, praise him in advance for the one you want in your life. Oh yeah. I didn't get mine until I was 33, but I said I'd rather have some young uh, old cheese than some young spam that won't fry. Hello. Turn to tell somebody, wait on the Lord, honey. Oh, somebody will get that tomorrow. So blessed women honor God, and they wait on God. But blessed women also honor one another. They cheer for their sister just as enthusiastically as they cheer for themselves. They celebrate their sister just as much as they celebrate themselves. They give a compliment to their sister just as much as they compliment themselves because they understand that if God made you and God made me the same God that's in me is blessing your life and so I affirm the God that's in you. Blessed women, leading ladies, honor one another. That's why Ruth and Naomi is such an important story. Ruth was half the age of Naomi. Naomi was a senior and together Ruth committed her life to making sure that Naomi would be all right. And in the end, Naomi also reciprocated and made sure that Ruth would be all right because there are going to be some seasons of your life that are going to change. And so if you're asking God for a sister, you got to make sure that you're being a sister. Don't ask him for nothing. You're not ready to be yourself. And so instead of calling somebody and say, I'll pray for you, turn off them soaps, turn off judge shows, go over and say, I'll pray with you. Because you don't know when your change is going to come. And you're going to need a sister right beside you. I want you to take a sister either in front of you or behind you by the hands right now and stand. And I want you to repeat these words. Someone you did not come into church with this morning. Take somebody, say, first of all, introduce yourself. Find out their name. Don't just hold their hand. Find out their name. All right. 
All right, y'all ain't going to a party, just their name. Now repeat these words, sister. sister I, love respect and honor I love respect and honor the position that you hold in Christ. If I can help you to be better in the ministry to which he has called you, I will. Today, sister, I promise that for as long as God is my king, and God is my Lord, and God is my Lord I, will never do, I will never do, say, say or, cause or cause to happen anything that will trip you up, trip you up tear, you down, tear you down, or discourage you, or discourage you in, your in your journey in Christ Jesus. Now give that sister a hug and make sure you get her name and address after we leave this place. Oh, yeah. Come on, give God some praise for your new sister. Give God praise for your new sister. Hallelujah. Didn't it feel good to get a hug? You know to be less stressed, you need five hugs a day. Find four other women and give them a Holy Ghost hug. Four other women in the Holy Ghost hug. One, two, three, four, and one more makes five. Hug them. Now put your hands together. Say, I feel less stressed already. Don't you feel less stressed already? Yeah. Slap so many high fives. Hey, high five. I need five hugs a day. Oh, I'm feeling the stress moving out this sanctuary already. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Too blessed to tolerate mess. Ooh, hallelujah. Sit down, you're making me nervous. Oh. Put time in with relationships that matter. And keep your standards high. You do not have to settle for just anything, male or female. Some people say, I'll take the brother if he can just tie his shoes and has matching socks. Turn and tell somebody, say, no, you don't. You need more than shoes and socks. And you need more than cute. Because after 40, cute wears off. I know what I'm talking about. Hello. Keep the standards in your relationships. Get your five hugs and celebrate a sister. In my book, Sister to Sister, it talks about one young lady who had a birthday, but she did not tell people it was her birthday. It was her 50th birthday. She just wanted to get women together, what she called a sisterly celebration. And so she just sent out an invitation and just said, please come over to my house to celebrate. There was one young lady who had just moved into town and she needed some sister friends. The Lord met her there. She was blessed. There was another one who was a new mother who was feeling guilty about taking some time for herself. She was in that circle. She was blessed. There were some older women who were changing life and going through their summers. Hello, anybody here know about that? Oh, can I get a witness up in here? And she was blessed. And so as the sisters got together in this sisterly celebration, they met new friends, they hugged just like you did today, and some wonderful lifelong friendships came out of that. I am praying for you today that you met a sister, that you will have some new lifelong, Christ-long friendships in the name of Jesus Christ. But when you go back home, you can have a sisterly celebration. Go through the church list and think about new people who came into the church who may not know. Say, I'm just inviting you over. You don't have to bring a dish, just bring yourself. Think about some mothers in the church, some elderly people who've lost their husbands or who are by themselves for the first time in their lives. Say, just come on over. It's a sisterly celebration. And you'll begin to see what the Lord will do when all of God's children get together. What a time, what a time, what a time. Blessed women honor God and blessed women honor one another. 
and blessed women honor themselves. Hold your hands up and say, I want to honor myself. If I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God, I've got to bring honor to myself. My grandmother in Concord, North Carolina, with whom I spent those wonderful summers, whenever we would go out of the house, when we got to the age of dating, she would always say, remember who you are. In other words, when you go out of here, you are representing all of us. And you come from good stock, so make sure you're honorable in your actions. Just because some little guy goes and pulls you in the room with one of them little blue or green light bulbs. Whoa. And start singing in your ear, la, 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 me. Oh, y'all ain't been singing gospel music all your life. She said, I want you to remember who you are. So don't lower your standards. You represent the Rushings and the Johnsons and the Cuthbertsons. And so when you walk in the room, you are royalty. And a princess never lets her standards down. So you honor yourself in your dating. You honor yourself in your mating. You honor yourself in your play. You honor yourself when you're at home. You give honor to God because you're saying, God, thank you for making me the queen that I am. And a whole lot of us must be queens and carry ourselves as royalty. Turn to tell somebody, the queen has arrived. In fact, queens, I want you to stand on your feet. When you're a lady, leading lady, you know, when I was an actor, even on Off-Broadway, after the audition and after you got the part, there was always the photo shoot. And you had to have a little attitude. You had to act like you thought you were on Broadway. Am I right about it? You had to get like Patti LaBelle says. She had a sword, she said, I got a new attitude. She said, I'm feeling good from my head to my shoes. She said, I got a new attitude, ooh, ooh, ooh. Turn to tell somebody, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know what ooh, ooh, ooh means? It means if you don't like the queen that I am, get out the way. God's getting ready to do something. Move over. The queen has arrived. Come on and take your pose, queen. Change your pose, queen. Come on, queen, stand one more time. Come on, this is the one for the photo shoot pose. The queen has arrived. I'm a leading lady. I don't take no stuff, for I am God's woman. The queen has arrived. Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. How do you be a queen? How do you be the woman God has created you to be? God didn't create stress. You may have come here as a mess, but God wants you to leave here a blessed mess. The test and the stress are over. He said, queen, come into my court. It's time to be the woman I created you to be. Gwendolyn Goldsby Grant, a great columnist for Essence Magazine, has a recipe for womanhood. Write these letters down, W-O-M-A-N. What does that spell? She said, what you need is one female. Any females in the house? She says, also the ingredients that you need is somebody who's got a healthy mind, body, and spirit. Any healthy mind, body, and spirit females in the house? And then she said, the other ingredient you need is a woman who has faith, hope, and love. Anybody up here have that? All right, you're ready for a recipe for womanhood that you might be the queen that God created you to be. W, a woman of God lives a daily life of worship. Say worship. First Thessalonians 5, 17 says she prays without ceasing. On the way to work, praying. Waking up in the morning, worship. I thank God for those who came in with me who are presenting because when I called them, they were in the midst of worship. They said, I'll call you later, Dr. Good. I like knowing that the people in the hotel room beside me and under me and beside me are worshiping the Lord. And so you want to wake up worshiping God. A daily life of worship. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He should be the beginning of your day and the end of your day and everything in between, worshiping God. Instead of your coffee break, say, I got to go take a worship break right now. I don't need that donut anyway. I need to spend some time with my God. 
and just take a stroll outside, find some water, find a place where you can be along, open the word of God and worship him. Lord, I just worship you. I thank you for the job I have. It's not the job that I'm going to end up with, but I thank you for the job I have right now. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. I adore you. I honor you. A woman of God lives a daily life of worship. Oh, a woman of God is obedient to God's commandments and every flavor of her essential being. Obedience. You got to trust and obey. God has been speaking into your spirit some things before you came, and he certainly has confirmed some things while you sat here. I know that because I got about five confirmations myself. He says, now as leading ladies, it's time to go back home. No more off-Broadway. You're center stage, front and center. Turn to tell somebody you're front and center now. That means there's lights, there's cameras, there's action, front and center. So you've got to be obedient to the word of God and go those places. Lord, order my steps. In your word, lead me, guide me every step of the way. I don't want to be anywhere you don't want me to be. I don't want to go anywhere you don't want me to go. I don't want to be with anyone you don't want me to be with. Lord, I want to be obedient to your word. A woman of God, M, Mary, say Mary. M-E-R-R-Y, Mary. -R -R Mary, not Mary. We ain't talking about Mary and Elizabeth, Mary. A woman of God knows that a merry heart doeth good like medicines. Proverbs 1722. When was the last time you just had some fun? When was the last time you just played? I had the best time last week just watching my children build sand castles on the sand. Just playing. Wanted to bury their mama in the sand. Just playing. I'm trying to get a good sermon and all they knew is they wanted mommy. Just bury me in the sand. Just play. When's the last time any of you just had some fun? When's the last time you smiled? Some of you wonder why you don't have a mate because some of y'all look too evil. A man ain't coming into Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, no. He wants somebody when he walks in that makes him feel like king. Hey. Do you know that it takes more muscles to frown? Then it takes to smile. Turn to tell somebody, be merry. Be now turn to tell somebody with a smile this time, be merry. Be Show all 92, whether you bought them or paid for them or they're real, just go on and smile. Say, these are mine. Ain't your business how I got them, where I got them, they're mine. Smile. Always walking like a photo shoot. Oh, are the cameras on me? <laughs> Mary. A, affection. Say affection. A woman of God sets her affections on things above and not on things on the earth. Materialism has taken over our nation. And so we put more time in our hair nets and our internets than we put in time with the Lord. See, don't be so busy doing PowerPoint that you forget who the real power player is. His name is Jesus. Oh, I know some of you are sitting at the corporate table now, but you want Jesus to sit with you. You want Jesus to prepare a table in the midst of that mess and anoint you in the midst of that corporate situation. She sets her affections on things above and not on things on the earth. And in a woman of God, never, say never is without faith, hope, and a dream. Now, faith is the substance of things you hope for. It's the evidence of things not seen. You never are without faith. You're never without hope. You're never without a dream. If God placed it in you, that means he who began a good work in you shall bring it to completion. Don't dismiss your dream. Hold on to it. That's a woman of God. That's a recipe for womanhood. You are blessed. Blessed women honor God. Blessed women honor one another. Blessed women honor themselves to God. Be the glory. Now affirm with me. I am too blessed to be stressed. I honor God. I honor my sister. I honor myself. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now turn to tell your sister, you are too blessed to be stressed. Now we're going to look at some major causes of stress. 
I'm not talking about all the medical stuff. I'm just talking about stress, stress. When you look at stress, it really is distress is the bad kind of word. And what distress means is that you're really dissing yourself. As the young people say, turn it to somebody, don't diss yourself. It means don't disrespect, don't deny yourself. And so some major causes of stress, one is that you do not make yourself a priority. Everyone else gets a slice of you like you a pizza pie. And when they get down to you, you don't even have a little piece of pepperoni left for yourself. Your spouse wants a slice of you. Aging parents need a slice of you. Children need two slices of you. The school needs a slice of you. Your job needs a slice of you. And when you get there, you have not made yourself a priority and you're spinning, you're under stress. Turn and tell somebody, don't let everybody get a slice. You got the whole sum for yourself. There was a show on Broadway that said for colored girls who, con who considered suicide when the rainbow was not enough. And one of those was that I, somebody ran away with all my stuff. No, some of us give all our stuff away. Turn and tell somebody, don't give all your stuff away. No, no, you got to save some stuff for yourself. One of the reasons of stress is we don't take breaks. When was the last time you took a vacation? I ain't talking about going to your mama and baby and them kids. Down south where you got to cook every meal. And then they ain't got no money, you got to give them some money. You know I'm right. You got to sleep three in the bed. When's the last time you took a real vacation? Where you had a queen-sized bed for a queen. When no little children were running up inside there saying, let me sleep with you. When was the last time you got in a whirlpool and let the water just splash on your bad self? When was the last time you jumped in a pool and let the water take over your head? I, I know you got these cute hairdos, but every now and then you got to take a dip. Just brush that stuff back, baby. If you ain't got enough for a ponytail, just make it a bob. Just slick it down, baby. Say, I'm a queen, even with my slick stuff. What other things cause us stress? We push, put too much on our plates. We don't know how to say no. And so sisters who were leading ladies are bending over like they've got spiritual osteoporosis. You want to get up but you put too much on your plate. You thought you could handle it, but you realize you really can't handle it all. You can have it all, but not at once. And some of us have put too much on our plates. We have not learned how to say no. In fact, I want you to practice saying no right now. Turn it to somebody, no. Well, oh, that sounds good. That was a good dry run. Turn it to the other one. If you want to be polite, turn it to somebody else, no, thank you. Now, if you really want to be serious, slap somebody high five and say, I said no. Ah, oh, now you're sounding like a leading lady. There are some days you just have to say, I can't take on another project. I can't visit another person in the hospital. I can't go to another funeral. I was down at 9-11 on ground zero and most of us in New York and Washington suffered such serious, serious trauma. Nobody ever expected two 107-story buildings to come tumbling down. And as a police chaplain, they called me immediately. And I got there that night, and we had to pray for a lot of people who still had missing loved ones. And that ordeal went on for 90 days straight, doing 14 and 16-hour days counseling, funerals, memorials, finding body parts, going to the morgue, identifying, going with this family to identify. And there was one point, I just pulled over on the side of the highway, and I said, no more! I can't take any more death. It did not make me any less of a leading lady. In fact, it made me better a leading lady because I was able to go home and handle some stuff I needed to take care of. Some days you have to say, no, enough already. Even God who made the heavens and the earth and the rivers and all the valleys took a day to rest. 
He said, no more creation. It's Sabbath time. Honor God. Honor yourself. Take a break. I've learned that recreation really means recreation. Because we're pouring out, we're giving out, we're giving out, and you have to have some time for God to recreate you. That's why we pray when each of the presenters finishes, Lord, pour back into her or him that which he has poured out because they have given of themselves. It takes a lot to do these conferences. And so when you have recreation times, it means I'm not doing any sermons, I'm not being on, I'm not getting my photo shoot. It just means stop. Be still and know that God is God. Turn it to somebody, you need a chill pill. That's how we say it in New York. That's paraphrasing it. The scripture says be still, but we say chill. Take a moment right there. Just lift your hands to the Lord and just be still. Put your stuff on your lap or on the floor. It's hard for any of you right now to even be still. Just, just be still. Don't say nothing. Just Be in his presence. Some of you feel your shoulders going down. Some of you feel them not in your back, those knots in your back loosening up. Some of you couldn't even turn your neck this morning because the stress was so strong, your neck was out of joint. But you feel God straightening you up because you're resting. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Why? So he can restore my soul. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Why? So he can restore my soul. He restores us before we go back to work because he knows the enemies are going to be there. All of that comes before he says, I'll, he'll prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. He restores you first so you can truly be a leading lady who's got something to fight with. I just say hallelujah. hallelujah. So prayer can break your stress. Playing can break your stress. And staying can break your stress. Some of us get in a conflictual situation and we want to move, whether that's at church or home. We we end relationships quickly, but sometimes there's some staying power that's needed so that God can begin to minister and teach us how to handle those stress-filled situations. How else can you handle stress? Take a bubble bath. Sometimes you don't have to have $2,000 to go to Hawaii. Sometimes all you need is some cow going, and a tub. So I have somebody high five say, now she on my street. <laughs> Baby, you don't have to go all the way across country. Just get you a bubble bath. Squeeze some of that sweet stuff in there. Pull the curtain, lock the door so no little kids can come in. So your husband won't be saying, Baby, what you doing? Just, I don't hear you. Mommy's not home right now. I'm being de-stressed. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. To God be the glory for the great things he's done. One of the scriptures I love in in Bishop Jakes' book was the story of the daughters of Zelephahad. It's found in Numbers 27. When you read it, it's a full nine or 10 or 11 verses. But there were five daughters, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, Tirzah. They were born to a father who had no sons. They lived in a time when sons had everything, a patriarchal society where everything revolved around the male. And so when a father would die, all of his inheritance would go to the son. But nobody had ever raised the question, what happens if there are no sons? And so these five daughters of Zalafahad had to raise the question, what happens if there are no sons? And what they basically said is that it's our turn. Turn to tell the sister, it's my turn now. I'm a leading lady. And these strong sisters, the first thing they did was they spoke up. Say, speak up. 
Stop mumbling like you got grits in your mouth. They spoke up. They stood before Moses. They stood before the congregation. They stood before the princes. They said, it's our turn now. Daddy's gone. Ain't no more male genes in our family. No testosterone in our house. It's all estrogen. Slap somebody high five, say yeah. Yeah. And daddy was a good man. He didn't die like the other men. Yeah, he had his sins, but he never turned against God. And so we won our inheritance. So the first thing they did was they stood up. Say, stand up. Stand up. A leading lady who's blessed stands up. Erect. Don't ever walk in the room with your head down. No. Photo shoot. They stood up. You got to find something to stand for. Or you'll fall for anything. Take a stand for the Lord. If you know that the Lord has spoken something into your spirit, don't let anybody take you to the left or to the right. You stand on the promises of God. Say stand. Stand. Got to stand up. You got to speak up. And then you got to stand out. Say stand out. out. What good is all the good that you do if nobody knows who you are? You got to stand out. You are not an island waiting to be discovered by Christopher Columbus or Queen Isabella. No, you are bad mamma jamma. Slap somebody high five, say, I'm a bad mamma jamma. Turn to tell the other person, you don't know who you sit next to. Now I want you to stand over your feet and say, I'm a bad mamma jamma. I stand up for Christ. I speak up for Christ. Stand out for Christ. Christ. To God God. be the glory glory. for the great things things. he has done. done. Finally, as we close, I want you to dare to be a Deborah. Turn and tell somebody, dare to be a Deborah. Deborah. This is my next to the last slide here. Turn and tell that sister, she got the PowerPoint down. Hey, yeah. Yeah, leading ladies got to know how to do a little bit of PowerPoint every now and then. Deborah was a judge and a prophetess, bivocational. First female judge of Israel, first prophetess that we know of. She was a bad mamma jamma. The first thing was her family was intact. See, so you can't be running around getting everybody else's family if your household ain't right. You got to spend some quality time with your family. I'm going back a day early tomorrow and I'm going to miss some of our presenters, but I'm going to get the tape series because Saturday is the only day that my children have me uninterrupted. I work on Sunday. They can't sit with their mommy as I'm pastoring. Monday through Friday, they're in day camp. I'm in my office. So Saturday is family time. For our husband, our children, their mom, we just go out to dinner. We go to the park. I watch them ride their bicycles. They bury me in the sand. We wrestle. We twist. They do all the things that boy children like to do. They got horsey. They want to get on your back. We have family time. Because they need to know that as mama's out there ministering to everybody else, that she's also taking care of business at home. So I have somebody high five say, keep it real, girl. Second thing about Deborah, her reputation was intact. All of those things you've done in the past, God has forgiven you. But from this day forward, for better or for worse, you got to walk and live like a queen. You can't just show up anywhere. You just can't be anywhere. There's some standards that God has for your life. Keep your reputation intact. Oh, can we be real in here? When I was a young lady, they used to have a song, Stay in My Corner. Oh, y'all don't know that song. And the brothers really wanted you to stay in the corner. But every now and then my parents would come down the stairs and say, what's going on up in here? And that's what God is doing when you go out from where you are. He's saying, what's going on up in here? I want to make sure that this is a queen that I give honor to and that gives honor to me. You represent me. You are an ambassador of Christ. You can't be in the darkness if you're walking in the light. The two don't go together. You got to stay in the light. Turn and tell somebody, stay in the light. Get out the corner and stay in the light. Some of y'all got to get out some situations. You got to stop shacking. Can we be real? This ain't no time for a shack attack. 
tell them if you want my goods, then marry me and it will be good. Hello. Hello, somebody. Brother Cook knows that I'm spiritual, but he also knows that I'm sensual. I'm all the way woman. Woo, slap somebody high five, say it's getting hot up in here. But Deborah also understood time management. Say time management. management. Said the sister was so bad, she sat under a palm tree that was named for her palm tree of Deborah. She was between two holy cities, Rama and Bethel. It didn't say that Deborah ran to Rama and Bethel. It said she sat under the palm tree. And if they wanted judging, the folk from Rama came to her. They come from Bethel, came to her. And what God is saying is you got to stop running all over the place because you're losing your energy, you're losing your spirituality, and you're so busy being a busybody, you're good for nothing. Time management says I conserve my strength, I conserve my spirituality, I conserve my energy so that I can be good for something. Slap somebody high five, say be good for something. But Deborah was also a risk taker. As you become a leading lady, you'll find yourself in places you've never been before. This arena is new for me. I didn't run with the woman that was a loose crowd. I met Bishop and Lady Sarita two years ago, and I am honored to be here. But it took something to kind of prepare for a new journey. My mother was Presbyterian. There were never more than 20 people in her church. Say amen. She was a stone Presbyterian. And still to this day, she said, I was born Presbyterian. I'm going to die Presbyterian. Got a Baptist daughter, but she's going to die Presbyterian. Amen. And my daddy was a stone Baptist, Union Baptist Church, 500 folk or so. And we were stone crazy. Amen. <laughs> and so to come into this new arena is a risk taking. I have to prepare differently. I have to pump up the volume a little. I have to get ready because the Lord is saying, I'm taking you. You prayed for a new level. I'm taking you there. So when you are asking God for something, say, be careful what you ask for. He's going to give it to you. So a risk taker has to change some routines. See, some folk do the same thing every day. They wake up on the same side of the bed every day. They go to bed in that same bonnet, put them same five rollers in their hair, wear that same night shirt every night, wake up, take that same shower at the same time, get dressed, wear that same skirt, that same nylon, that same dress on Monday. Go to work, arrive at the same time, quarter to nine. Stop at Dunkin' Donuts, get the same kind of donut, glazed. Put two sugars in my coffee. Go to work, work from nine, get that same lunch break at 12. Have that same bologna mayonnaise sandwich. Go home at five, cook that same tuna casserole. Go to bed with that same shirt, same bonnet, same five rollers, same. Turn to tell somebody, God's getting ready to break your routine. It's time to put some night nice shirts away. You know I'm right about it. Got to be a risk taker. I had this one night nice shirt I wore from everything, from college. Every time I washed it, I would go, the first thing I had to wash was, it had a ducky wucky with a Santa Claus hat on it. Soon as the honeymoon was over, found my ducky wucky shirt. He said, child, you got to put that ducky wucky away. Don't do nothing for me. So I had to put Ducky Wucky with the Santa Claus shirt. I had to kill it. Turn to tell somebody some things you got to kill. No more Ducky Wucky. Turn and ask the sister beside you, what's the Ducky Wucky in your life? What you got to put away? Some things you got to put away. Unforgiveness, controlling. You got to put those things away. Forgetting those things which are behind. I press, I press, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God. It takes some effort. I got to break loose. I got to get what God has for me. And finally, Deborah knew what her battles were. She said, I'm only going to go if you're going to go with me, but I'm going to make sure that this is the battle God wants me to fight. See, turn and tell somebody, not every battle is your battle. Stop going in your son-in-law and your daughter-in-law's business and let them build their own family. Oh, I'm on somebody's apartment right now. 
I'm in somebody's backyard right now. Stop trying to control everything your spouse does, your kids do. Turn and tell somebody, let it go. Because when you let it go, God lets it flow. And his Holy Spirit can flow in your life. Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. And finally, if you're going to lead, if you're going to be too blessed to be stressed, you also have to read. There's some books here. You need to make sure you read Bishop T.D. Jake's God's Leading Ladies. You need to read. We'll have a table right outside the sanctuary following this for Too Blessed to be Stressed, A New Dating Attitude, Sister to Sister, Wise Women. You got to read. And understand people who've been on the journey, who are in the level that you are trying to get to, read their experiences so that you don't have to repeat the same lessons over and over. And finally, if you're going to be a leading lady, you got to make sure you keep your toy toy. Oh, are there any toy toy ladies up in the house? I know you've been sitting since 9 o'clock, but are there any toy toy ladies up in the house? I mean, is there anybody here who loves my Jesus? Is there anybody here who loves my Lord? Is there anybody who knows he puts pep in your step and gravy on your grits? Is there anybody here who knows he's the butter on your biscuit? Can you call his name? Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. He put running in my feet, clapping in my hands, joy in my soul. And every now and then I got to do the toy toy. Come on. You can tell somebody, excuse me. I would love this channel to be an over-the-top platform, getting a play button, of course, and reaching a wider audience. And my aim is to point people back to God because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We are in the last and evil days. Let's keep our ears open. In conclusion, I need your help. Your seed is important whether you're new to this channel or not. Liking the next video that I upload on any platform underneath Catch My Praise. Giving credit to where you get your sources also helps. Your generous gifts of any amount are welcome. Catch App is always open under Catch My Praise. Why am I doing this? because it takes a lot to do a lot. Thank you for listening. Until then, believe it, reach it, catch it, here only on the Catch My Please Network.